Hello, yes, welcome to Master of Library and Information Science students and uh, particularly the students of uh, the fourth semester. Dear students, now there is a gap and I would like to revive your uh, memory and uh, as you know, uh, I was teaching you the paper uh, that is information systems and networks and in this information systems and networks there are uh, four units and I had the opportunity to complete only one unit and in the meantime this corona and lockdown problem came. So just to revive your memory I would like to say that in unit one we talked about the information, information systems, information networks, very brief introduction about information systems and networks. And in this information systems of networks, we first try to understand that what is an information system? A system organized and it is an interlinkage of interrelated subsystems. I was giving an example of public library system, academic library system. So when you put together school, college, universities, university libraries, then you call it a system or a library system and an academic library system. Similarly, a public library system. So, once we know what is information systems and thereby information networks which provide different types of uh, information to our user group, then we studied, if you remember, there are different ways what we call it uh, the information seeking behavior. There are different approaches of information seeking behavior, current approach, exhaustive approach, everyday approach and brushing up or casting up approach. So this is clear that it's not only one group or one category of users need information, everybody needs information. Whether students, teachers, research scholars, scientists, technocrats, planners, public make, um, policy makers, the government, agriculturist, industrialist, public at large, everybody needs information. So when you say everybody needs information, that means it is our job as a library and information professionals, more importantly information professionals that how do you design and develop an information system. To design an information system or design and develop an information system, suppose for example I say the uh, legal information system, uh, then uh, agriculture information system, defense information system, that means these are highly specialized covering or specializing clearly focusing users, its collections and services which are different from libraries or general libraries. So we studied about that and in order to see that the information systems are properly functioning, we need to combine three major components that is information sources or information originators, all those who are responsible for creating, originating information. You may say authors, editors, the compilers, uh, the scientists, uh, all those who are responsible for the creating, originating information that is called source of information. 
Then the another component we need that uh, the information transfer. A, how can the information so created need to be disseminated to whom? The third component is user group, target group. So, information originator that is what is source of information, information transfer, information processor, information transfer combining one group and the third one is for whom the information is designed, that system is designed that is the user group. If it is a legal information system, who are the ultimate beneficiaries, target groups? It is advocates, legal practitioners, legal students, in academics, teachers, scholars, practitioners, anything who are going to be specialized in the area of law. So, when you say information system, and networks design and development of information system, the, the science and technology areas or the generation of information, ideas, innovations takes much in the area of science and technology. So, the scientific information, scientific organizations and establishment, particularly research and development organizations they do a lot in creating originating information. So, when you say information for scientists or in order to meet the information needs of research and development organizations, more specifically science and technology organizations, they need lot of work say what you say original information, primary source of information. So, they constantly need the source of information which is original, primary and also they need proper services. So, how can they get if these libraries, information centers, documentation centers attached to R and D organizations in the field of uh, science and technology, they need very very specialized type of uh, sources and services, only the research articles, journals, monographs, index abstracts, technical reports, patents and they need very very specialized services like CS and SDI. And, uh, literature search, current awareness service, what you call it uh, allotting service and document delivery service, repackaging service, many are many extension services. The, the next step is if we need to establish an information system, design an information system as I discussed in our class in the unit 1, there are many uh, principles of designing and developing an information system. The system should be acceptable to all. The system should aim at enhancing decision making. It should be economic. I mean talking about cost benefit analysis, flexibility, reliability, simplicity. So, a, I ended it this unit with uh, that a system life cycle beginning from analyzing the information system, from analysis then we go to design, from design we go to implementation, from implementation we go to operation, then evaluation, then the decay starts deteriorating and a replacement takes place. So, at the end of this particular unit, we discussed about if you a system, information system is working and going on well and you know the, the technology is moving or changing so fast, the user's requirement, information seeking approach of the users moving so fast, changing so fast. Therefore, each and every information system needs to be evaluated after a particular time period that is what we call evaluation of information system. 
So, the evaluation is nothing but to identify the strength and weakness, how the system is operating, beneficial or not, the target group, the user group are satisfied or not, do you need any technological upgradation. Therefore, in order to know the efficiency of working of information system, we need to evaluate there are different uh, what you call different parameters like access, is there any access problem, technology access, you know, access to contents, access to networking technology, content, cost, whether the information system is user friendly or not, users are facing any pro problem to that, display format, electronic document delivery. So, there are several parameters that we discussed. So, this is was briefly about unit 1. Today, I will be giving a, a detailed uh, description about unit 2, unit 3 and unit 4. See unit 2 and 3, when you discuss about unit 2 and 3, the unit 2 is concentrating on national information system. Unit 3 is international or global information system. When it is a national information system, this national information system in our course or syllabus, there are three national information system. And some time back, I have uh, sent uh, uh, course material to the post semester students of this paper of this particular unit and also I have sent um, assignments of this uh, unit too. So, when you say environmental information system ENVIS, e -N -V -I -S, environmental information system, it is mainly the objective is mainly to satisfy the information needs of all those scientists, academicians, researchers, environment related organizations and in institutions, uh, the workforce working in those areas, researchers to, to make them available the information relating to environment. So, it, as I told, it is very, very beneficial for policy makers, planners and policy makers, scientists and the engineering and technological aspects relating to environment. So, all those who are benefited uh, in this group established by the Ministry of Environment, uh, the government of India. It has uh, a number of uh, objectives and functions. Uh, it has long term objectives and short term objectives. Equally important is the next one is the, the uh, biodiversity uh, information system BIS. This biodiversity information system under DST Department of Biodiversity Science and Technology. They also provide, they have a special uh, website on this uh, biodiversity information system and they are mainly talking about the uh, vegetation, flora, fauna, the something related to the biodiversity technical and different uh, thrust areas associated with uh, uh, a, a searchable uh, biodiversity portals and uh, anything which is very much specialized and focused to the researchers uh, and the scientists in the area of uh, the biodiversity. Similarly, we have uh, the another information national level information system that is related to uh, that is called PIS, 
patent information system. When it's a patent information system, as you know, the industrial designs, industrial products, commercial designs. Now, many is scientific and innovative work is being patented. There are patent acts in different countries, including India. So, when there is a scientific technological innovation and if there is a product or intellectual research oriented activities or any commercial products, commercial design, it is patented in the name of an author, individual or organization, so that it is licensed, it is legal, nobody else can copy it. So that is why we have patent organization, Indian patent organization and this PIS patent information system which is located at Nagpur, they take care of these things. As I said in the unit 3, in unit 3 we are talking about uh, uh, four international information system, they we can call it they are the global database in the specific uh, subject area, international databases, international information system, these four are agrees. Uh, uh, international information system in agriculture science, another in international nuclear information system, INIS, 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 and INSPEC is another uh, international database in physics and electronics, and fourth one is MEDLARS, um, medical literature and uh, medical literature analysis and retrieval systems. So, AGRIS as you know an information system, international information system in agriculture science established by food and agricultural organization uh, FAO and it caters the information needs of the agricultural scientist, agricultural workers, agricultural uh, researchers international level. So, what you can say that they have developed worldwide information resources or database uh, in the areas of uh, agricultural science, agrees. Similarly, there is uh, INIS uh, is again uh, nuclear science, nuclear research, nuclear related development and uh, international nuclear information system established by International Atomic Energy Agency located at uh, Vienna, which is the capital of uh, Austria. So, they are exclusively engaged in the area of nuclear science, nuclear research and uh, all those science and technology people with a specialization in nuclear science, nuclear studies, they get lot of benefit from uh, INIS. Similarly, when you, when you talk about INSPEC, INSPEC is uh, again uh, another uh, international database. As I said, uh, it is uh, in the areas of uh, physics, uh, electronics, uh, uh, engineering uh, and, uh, um, and lot of uh, you know uh, the engineering and technology people uh, and their scientists, their area of work, their research work uh, is uh, so much of original contributing a lot for the societal and national development. So, this is a database large million of data millions of records in their database and uh, the publications. Uh, and the database is of international very very high quality uh, database. Then when you when you talk about MEDLARS, it is again a great contribution to medical science and uh, MEDLINE is the name of the, the international databases that is being provided by MEDLARS. So, MEDLARS medical literature analysis and retrieval system, this is a worldwide information system developed by, design developed by uh, NML, National Medicine of Library, uh, which is located in Washington DC. 
So, that National Library of Medicine, NLM, uh, National Library of Medicine, yes. So, this database, international database in the field of medical science, medical research, medical analysis, and this database is available in 40 languages, uh, including English, and the access is free, free access to this uh, database, and their coverage is medicine nursing, pharmacy and, and dentist, uh, veterinary science, healthcare, biology, biochemistry, molecular evolution, biomedicine and uh, health services, AIDS, toxicology and environmental health, molecular biology, behavioral science, chemical science, bioengineering, lot of areas, information resources they are covering in uh, this uh, medlars. So, when I discuss about uh, uh, national information system, global information system, if you want to get lot of literature because these information systems are changing so radically. If today you see the website something is there and one product, one service, after six months it is changed. So, when you attempt to uh, attempt to answer the questions. If you want uh, a good uh, description about about this uh, national and international information system, please go to the original website, website of those information systems, national or international. My my suggestion uh, request is uh, don't go through any books which may be published in five years back, ten years back, but now everything is changed. That is why go to the original source that is the, the website of the concerned uh, national and international information system as I told uh, three in uh, an I national level and four in international level. There are many, but since it is covered in our syllabus that is why uh, these uh, things please go through the curriculum and syllabus. The fourth unit is a very important unit and in this important unit no uh, it is something related to networks. Well networks every day you use network internet, networking and internet every day it takes place, but here we are talking about two types of network one is data network, another is library and information networks. Data networks, library information networks the main objective of network is accessing, sharing information. Every day you are using internet now, if maybe some years back, some months back your internet use was very less, but today I was going to a newspaper where in India the use of internet has increased more than 13 percent what it was earlier day and night 24 into 7 everybody is he wants to use internet this has become the life that is why when you talk about uh, library and information networks as you know very popular is in filmnet and delnet there are many local library networks and why these library networks the main objective is accessing the library resources a group of libraries joining together they form a, a particular uh, networking, networking forum, networking point, a common point where all the libraries, maybe local libraries, libraries at national level or international level join together and they are known as member libraries or participating libraries. So, there are two things that are very important, one is uh, access, access to library resources, library collections and it avoids the duplication of uh, money, manpower and material and services. So, these library information networks they not only provide access to library resources where that exactly the document is located, they are equally important is that in one particular point, in one particular place they can access all the libraries, member libraries and through them once they look at the document, a document can easily be procured through 
what you call it uh, document delivery service old concept is library cooperation or you call it interlibrary loan so most important is the we need to know identify locate where is this book or document available that is the purpose or objective for which this library net information networks came into existence so these are available in india at two level one is the national level and the local level in the national level we have infinet and delnet in local level there are many library networks most of them are operational functional most of them are just for name sake uh, Kalgada Library Network, Ahmedabad Library Network, Pune Library Network, Bombay Library, Madras Library Network. These are at local level, but national level there are two prominent library networks that is uh, Infilmnet and Delnet. Infilmnet Information and Library Networks located in Ahmedabad, this is under UGC, it has a mandate. Only the academic libraries can become the member of the Infilmnet that is university and college libraries, more specifically uh, university libraries for college libraries they provide uh, uh, library resources books journals under a different uh, platform that is they call it uh, enlist so besides they not only provide access they also provide a lot of services bibliographic service you know, database service uh, document delivery service uh, and uh, very remarkable services, we can say this uh, internet has become a boon to the academic community and uh, now they are providing around more than 15,000 full text journals through this uh, library consortia ESO Sindhu and uh, similarly Delnet is uh, engaged in a lot of activities. Uh, and the thousands of libraries has become part of Delnet. One advantage of Delnet is they accept membership all types of library, it is a school library, or a government library, or a department library, public library, special library, academic library, all libraries they accept. That is what it is, Delnet is helping a lot to them. So, when you talk about what are the, the, the features, what are the special features of this library network, that means they are access, the target group, the technological upgradation, uh, conversion, uh, standardization, they have their own uh, compatibility and uh, that means uh, the connectivity will take place between the two libraries or uh, one library with the, the uh, main organization which provides that library network whether Delnet or Infinet, when there is compatibility between both or among them, they follow the same standards uh, and guidelines that is very important for library and information networks. As I told besides this library information networks, they, there are two types you no know, one kind of category is data networks, another is library and information networks. Library information networks, I gave you some example, but when you talk about data networks like NIC providing one network called NICNET, NIC, NET, NICNET. So, the main objective of this NIC or NICNET is to connect right from the block level to central ministry, government of India, no ministries, departments their activities, plans, policies and programs of uh, government of India ministries and department to be connected to state capital. Again the state capital is connected to districts, districts are con con connected to blocks. So, they are called the NIC nodes. So, the main objective is how data or information can very quickly, easily, reliably can be transmitted to block level starting from the top apex to the block level so that people make use of this information. They should know what are the different plans, policies and programs of government of India, the state government, what is happening at block level, district level, what are the welfare programs, what are the different new new schemes that the government is bringing out so that the people, the benefit goes to the people. That is the main objective of uh, NICNET. 
another area uh, one network is education research network long back they were providing you know internet service uh, and um, and they they provide in to academic institutions r and d organizations uh, in course of time it was found that the network uh, through satellite uh, was uh, very slow you no know, we moved our set you no know, networking system or internet uh, uh through dial up mode you know, if you remember from dial up we went to broadband from broadband we went to satellite from satellite uh, then we went to copper cables everything failed in terms of internet speed access now the latest we are using is optical fiber fiber optics so our net education and research network under the ministry of uh, information and communication technology same also in ic nicnet another we are going to discuss that is national knowledge network network all three under the ministry of information and communication technology the rnet is how they can promote uh, e content how that the the training and capacity building what are the research that can be undertaken in the period of a uh, period of technology how the technology is going to supplement facilitate help to the all the academic and research and development organizations in terms of training capacity building upgradation using use of state of the art technology that is what is rnet is education research network is engaged in and the last one is the, the latest is you no know, national knowledge network or if thanks to nkn uh, government of india ministry of information communication technology and mhrd to have this uh, to those who have launched this national knowledge network today if you are at university level and uh, research and development organization universities institutions of higher learning they are all connected to this connectivity called uh, nkn connectivity providing 1 gb high speed uh, internet access so it's because of the bandwidth so higher is the bandwidth greater is the speed so nkn no gone are the days when you were using you know 10 kbps kbps 100 kbps 1 mb 10 mb at university big big university level today we are using um, 1 gb they have planned to increase more so 1 gb bandwidth of internet speed is too much or it is more than the normal that is why you get in the campus high speed internet speed so the nkn the program or this uh, nkn uh, they have launched this uh, scheme to provide high speed internet to all these academic institutions research and development organizations so how quickly easily the research community academic community can have easy and quick high speed access to knowledge resources that is the very objective of uh, national knowledge network internet connectivity high bandwidth in in the process they are focusing on education their agriculture health everywhere no technology and internet is so much important so that uh, our day to day living our day to day requirement that becomes a very very uh, a great necessity and essential also so our life is now entirely depending upon internet internet speed for educational purpose academic purpose research purpose in which this national knowledge network is playing a very important role so students these are some of the things important things which i wanted to discuss in these uh, four units i am i will be in touch with you i am already in touch with you through through emails uh, uh, using social media tools other social media tools so when please be careful when i am sending course material first read it then attempt to assignments i hope 
we all of us will get back to our normal classes i hope very soon so that we will have more uh, interaction live interaction and uh, and uh, we'll try to me and my colleagues all will try to solve all your clarifications problems i hope uh, we will be meeting uh, very soon thank you so much